Hi everyone, here we go. It feels like it's been forever. It's only been two weeks. Um, all right, so we're going to start chapter eight talking about evolution. Really interesting. Um, so what's happening with coronavirus right now? That's a great example of evolution. So I sent you guys an announcement. Um, hopefully you looked at the video. I'm also going to put the video embedded into our Canvas page because, again, it's an, a great example of evolution. And I'm going to ask you questions about that. But for now, let's get into evolution. What is evolution, right? Evolution, evolve. If we say something is evolving, what does that mean? changing okay and natural selection natural selection is uh, an agent to evolution so we're going to talk about those things it says darwin's dangerous idea evolution by natural selection so you know it we're not going to argue about is evolution real or not or does evolution happen or not we know that it happens we can see it happening it's in it we can make it happen okay the definition of evolution is changes in lines of descent over time so changes in the population over time and we see that that happens um and again like virus populations we see change you know how come we the, the cold keeps changing flus keep changing why do we always have a new flu vaccine um because the virus changes and in this case coronavirus is a group of viruses and COVID-19 is a subset of that and that virus keeps changing too by the way right the mutations we've talked about mutations they're the ultimate source of change okay so here when we talk about darwin so in this chapter we're going to talk about darwin um you know his idea his dangerous idea because it went against a lot of things that people thought were happening at the time um so we could talk about you know owls right the adaptations they have their big eyes to see at night, the way their wings are, and they're really, really silent. If you've ever seen an owl flying or heard an owl flying, you, you can't hear them, right? They're really quiet. And if we look really closely at this picture, we'll see that, hmm, whoop, oh, there's something over here. So this idea of camouflage, you know, is this a result of evolution so the predator and the prey and the adaptations the words we use are adaptations you know can they be due to evolution all right so that's what we're talking about so evolution what is it uh darwin and what did darwin do and then evidences of evolution and how can evolution happen okay so those are the big ideas in this chapter all right so learning objective What's evolution and evolution in action? Darwin's journey and his idea. I'm gonna have a video that I want you guys to see and it, and it goes through Darwin and a really good video because Darwin was a person, you know? How did he come to these ideas and how was he bold enough to write about them and really bring about this instrumental change in our way of thinking? able to describe and explain the four mechanisms so how does evolution happen how populations adapt through natural selection so natural selection is going to be a big idea the evidence of evolution so we have a lot of evidence so extinctions are evidences of evolution looking at different species uh, over time all right so here's a picture and it's like, hmm, where's the eye? Is the eye here or is the eye there? And what would be the advantage of having an eye looking at that? So evolution in action, we can actually cause evolution to happen. Um, people have been doing this for hundreds of years. You know, artificial selection is a type of evolution. When we breed for certain types of cows or dogs or certain types of plants, right? We're changing the population over time. Now here, they, they show you evolution uh, occurring in the lab. 
you know, we can see evolution occurring right before us. Again, coronavirus, great example of evolution, and watch the video, okay? So here, we're looking at fruit flies, Drosophila. The, um, these are fruit flies, and they are, um, they, they're flies, they don't live that long, right? It says the average fly can survive about 20 hours without food, okay? So if the fly doesn't have food, it dies after 20 hours. So uh, in the population, there is variation in the population. Some flies die after five hours without food or 10 or 15 or 20. The average is 20. Some can survive for 25 hours without food or 30 hours, 35 hours until death from starvation. Okay, so scientists ask the question, could you breed fruit flies that could live longer than 20 hours on average, right? Could we change the population? So they did an experiment. So here are some flies in this container. They took the food out. When they took the food out, the flies start to die, right? Because we know, like after five hours, some start dying, 10 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours, right? Then they waited till a lot of the flies died. And the ones that survived, they had them breed and have babies. So initial setup, start with a cage that contains a large number of fruit flies, 5,000, remove the food. Wait until 80% flies starve to death, then return the food to the cage, okay? So return the food back to the cage. After the surviving flies eat a bit, collect the eggs, and of those flies and transfer them to a new cage. All right, so the guys who survived a long time get their babies. All right, so generation, first generation, average uh, starvation resistance is 20 hours. Generation one, 23 hours. So then the question is, what if we did this over and over and over again? Select for the flies that live the longest and breed them in the next generation and breed them in the next generation. And what can happen? Can we increase or how much can we increase starvation resistance? So they did that. Start each new generation using eggs only from the fruit, fruit flies in the top 20%. After five generations, what would happen? After 60 generations, what would happen? Now look, after 60 generation, average starvation resistance 160 hours. Wow, okay, so after 60 generations, we see such a huge difference, right? From the average being 20 hours of starvation resistance to now 160. Over many generations of natural selection, now this of course is not natural, there's nothing natural about it, this is artificial. But we did this in the lab, and the question is, can that happen naturally in populations? Like, if the environment is changing, can populations change over time, okay? So it says, over many generations, natural selection, the population changes. Originally, the flies couldn't survive a day without food. Now they survive almost a week. Wow, okay? So this would be an example of natural selection, but, excuse me, not natural selection. This would be an example of evolution but it's totally artificial. So hand sanitizers and hand sanitizers working against, um, you know, bacteria, eventually we're actually, um, what's the word? We are picking or we are, I can't think of the word really quickly, um, choosing bacteria that can survive, right? Uh, uh, not choosing, not picking, and I can't think of the word. It'll come to me in a second. So yeah, and so now we have bacteria that are resistant um, with antibiotic resistant bacteria and antibiotics. We have bacteria that are, are resistant. Um, so, you know, then the question is, can there be changes naturally too? So dev does evolution occur? The answer is absolutely yes. So there is no, um, how, what's the word? We're not saying it doesn't. We know it does. We can see it doing so. And the question is, how does it do it in the natural population? We can watch it happen in the lab whenever we want. All right. 
So what about Darwin? Who is he? What was he? What did he do? Again, I'm going to have you guys watch a video. Um, please do watch that video. It's really interesting. Okay, This kind of idea that changed our world, really. Darwin's journey to an idea. Before Darwin, many people believed that all species had been created separately and were unchanging. So before Darwin, people thought that species do not change. Okay. But there were other scientists of the time who looked at the natural world and saw that there were changes. For example, um, Georges uh, Dubuffon suggested that the earth was much older. Georges Cuvier uh, documented fossils, showed that extinction occurs. So, so if species don't change, why were there extinct species that are definitely different than what we have now? Jean-Baptiste Lamarck uh, suggested that living species might change over time. Charles Lyell argued geologic forces, the idea that the earth is changing. And then here's Darwin, okay, young Darwin. Usually you see Darwin with a big beard. So the idea that extinctions happen, hmm, okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly because, yeah, okay. So Darwin, um, the picture, let me see if we have a picture of Darwin. We don't, okay, oh, no, that's not, that's not Darwin. Okay, we'll go back. Um, the picture you guys are usually uh, used to is Darwin with a big beard, okay. So Darwin, um, he was a young man. Uh, he was working to be a doctor. He hated the idea of being a doctor, um, went to medical school. At the time, they didn't have anesthesia. They didn't have, so when they did surgeries, they actually did surgeries on people without anesthesia. Can you imagine? He thought it was so gruesome. He thought it was horrible. He loved nature and he got the opportunity to be what's called the ship's naturalist. And the ship was called the Beagle and it was a five-year voyage around the world, right? So this shows the voyage, right? And the specific islands, an island chain, are called the Galapagos. And they're an island chain. They're created by volcanic eruptions. I'll put some videos on with that. They're beautiful islands. Um, the, the organisms in the water, the organisms on the land. The picture they had here was of an iguana in the Galapagos. There are marine iguanas going to the water. Uh, iguanas are vegetarian, so it's so cool to watch iguanas go into the ocean and eat. So anyway, he was the ship's naturalist. And so that's basically the biologist where he looked at na nature and he identified organisms. He used to get super violently sick, seasick. So he, anytime he could get off the ship, he did, okay? And so the Galapagos are famous because it's here that he saw these organisms that were similar to organisms on the mainland, yet different. And then he was asking, you know, how did that happen? And so the, the, there are the Galapagos uh, tortoises that are very famous. There are the Galapagos finches that are very famous. And in the book, they show you the finches. All right, so around the world, uh, he, it says, that indulge his love of nature, make observations that enable him to develop the theory of evolution. By the way, the word theory, again, is not I think idea. It means it's something that's been tested over and over and over again and has been shown to be true. He was 16. He worked in medical studies. Again, hated it. Studied theology. Theology, we're talking about religion at Cambridge University. But his real love was nature. So here, where are the Galapagos? Here is Ecuador, okay? And the Galapagos is an island chain formed by volcanic eruptions off of Ecuador. And so here are the mainland finches, and here are the Galapagos finches. So they were similar to the mainland finch, yet they were different. Like their beaks were different, and, and, and that made Darwin ask why. Here are some um, extinct um, organisms that were similar to uh, organisms that are alive today, and he asked why. So then he noticed two important patterns. And I'm going to stop the video here and we're going to continue with video number two.